You're listening to Catholic Nurse Coach Podcast. I'm your host, Nicole Haugen, wife, mom, nurse, and Catholic life coach. The mission of this podcast is to coach Catholic nurses to follow God's plan. Welcome. Today, we're going to be talking about stubbornness and also about Saint Eulalia of Merida. And she's from Spain from the year 2020, 20, no, from the year 292 to 304. And her feast day is December 10th. And again, I'm reading from the book Saints Around the World by Meg Hunter Kilmer. So Saint Eulalia of Merida was gentle and sweet and pleasant, except when she wasn't, because while it's good to be gentle and sweet and pleasant most of the time, sometimes you have to be strong and stern and force, forceful instead. Though she was only 12, Eulalia had been consecrated as a bride of Jesus, and when her parents discovered that Christians were being martyred in their town, they knew Eulalia was in trouble, not because she might be caught, but because they were sure that as soon as she found out, she would march right into the court and shout at the government officials who were doing such wicked things. And while they were proud of their daughter's faith, they didn't want her killed. So Eulalia's parents took her to the country, hoping she wouldn't find out about the persecutions. But she did. And once Eulalia realized what was happening, she knew she had to do something about it. She climbed out of her window, which was a very naughty and dangerous thing to do, and snuck back into Merida. Once she was there, Eulalia stormed furiously up to the wicked judge and began to yell. Normally, the judge would have had someone killed on the spot for attacking them that way, but Eulalia was so little and so cute, so he spoke to her like she was throwing a silly temper tantrum, telling her just to worship the idol a little bit. How do you think Eulalia felt about that? Well, how do you feel when you're very upset about something and a grown-up acts like you're just being like a silly child? Eulalia was fuming, not just for her sake, but for God's sake. And suddenly she wasn't as a bit sweet and gentle. No, she was spitty mad. And so she did a dreadful rude thing that you must never ever do unless a pagan judge is trying to force you to worship a false god. She spat in the judge's face, though she kicked over his false gods. Then she kicked over his false gods. Well, that judge was just as angry as you would imagine. So angry he had Eulalia martyred. Saint Eulalia of Merida had known how to control her temper. And she had known when to let it fly, and God used all of her for his glory. So, St. Eulalia, again, I had never heard of her, um, but, you know, I think we all have a little bit of this in us. And, and you know, it, it's a children's book, so it talks like, okay, when an adult treats you like a child. But, for example, I think oftentimes, especially in marriages or with coworkers, you know, sometimes we as adults can treat each other as child as well as children as well. So for example, um, at the end of last week, my husband and I, I don't, you know, we had a bit of a little tiff, a little discussion. And um, I was gonna say, I don't even remember what it was about, but I do. So um, I was not very pleasant that day. I was tired. The kids were a bit much when they came home. And, you know, I was pretty short tempered. And so that's when times when our stubbornness can, we can get wrapped up in that and be like, no, I'm having a bad day. This is how it is. Right. And like, not look at other people around us and not look at how we're treating them, which is exactly what I did. And so I ended up snapping, you know, a couple more times, one, two, I'm too many. And, and he got mad at me. And so you know, it was, it's funny because when I was mad, I felt completely justified in it, right? The kids were misbehaving. I'm having a hard day. Like nothing's going right in my business. And which wasn't true because just that morning we had a great discussion right before he left for work of how well I think things are going. And so he came home and he was just blindsided. (laughs) Like, and again, So that's just, you know, emotions and, and instead of feeling my feelings, I just kind of let it spiral. And so when he then was mad at me, I felt like, oh, how dare he, right? He's, he's being stubborn. He's treating me like a child. But the reality was that I was also being stubborn. I was also treating him like a child pretty much since the moment he came in the door. And I felt like, well, he just should see that I'm upset 
And he knows this. And I've told him what he should do in order to help not have me be so upset. And so, which is ridiculous, right? Because he can do everything perfect. Everything I've told him that helps and it does help, but it ultimately comes back to what am I thinking about it? Right? Like, I was just upset. I was mad. I was tired. And in the back of my mind, I kept thinking, I'm a failure. My business is going to fail. And so those were my thoughts. And so everything else around me was failing because of how it was showing up. And so with that, I let I let things go farther than I, I should have. So we both were upset. Both of our our tempers were up, I would say. And and then it got to the point where, okay, I calmed down. I was like, yeah, he's right. I just taken things out on him. I shouldn't have acted that way. Before ending my work day and having the kids come home, I should take time. Like if I'm feeling that way, I should take time to feel my feelings and to think of what thoughts are causing it. And then to kind of, are those thoughts true? And then, you know, even when he comes home to just say, you know, this is what I was thinking. Like, what do you think? You know, cause sometimes any, all the time, other people can give us a different perspective, right? Like they can, they can look at something and say, no, that's completely untrue. And so that's what I should have done, but I didn't. And so when it came time for me to apologize to him, I was upset that he was holding a grudge. I was upset that he was being stubborn. Okay. So we can easily see in other people when they're acting that way, but it took me, you know, how many hours after he got home, probably a good two hours for me to see like, oh yeah, now that I see him acting that way, yeah, that I was acting that way, right? Because we we are able to see that in other people. It's called a mirror effect. Okay, so I could see then how stubborn he was being and I wanted him to instantly come around and to to see the error of his ways when I couldn't even do that. It took me quite a while to calm down. But once I calmed down, it's like, well, he should just calm down now. Like he's being stubborn. He's doing the exact same thing I did. And oftentimes this kind of goes round and round in our marriages and it's, it can be hard or difficult or challenging to kind of get out of that spiral. That's where a lot of times my husband and I, we, we used to be really bad at the spiral. We used to get caught in the spiral and it would be at least a week, longer, 10 days, two weeks, maybe, you know, we're like, yeah, we would talk to each other, but it wasn't, it was just basically about day-to-day things. Kids pick up this gas needs to be on this, like pay the bills, that kind of stuff. Whereas now we've gotten a lot better. I've gotten a lot better at recognizing, okay, what am I feeling right now? Why am I feeling that way? And we get out of that spiral a lot faster. And some of it is stubbornness. And so that's with say Eulalia. Um, I just, I like the story because I thought, oh, here's a way that your stubbornness can be used for good right? But oftentimes we dig in our heels and we want to point out how the other person is behaving instead of reflecting and looking at ourselves and how we're behaving and how stubborn we can be. Like my husband loves to point out how stubborn I am. And it's funny because I don't think he realizes in hindsight, like how stubborn he can be as well, which again is fine. And so, um, yeah, so we ended up you know, apologizing. He ended up calming down, like, you know, not really that night, but by the next day and I had apologized. So we were able to talk it out, but just a few tips that I want to leave you with is when you find yourself in this kind of spiral of you did this, I did this, right? Like, no, like I apologized for yelling but you need to apologize for yelling too, right? Like when we get caught in the, the blame game, let's call it. And when we try to apologize, but it really doesn't come off as sincere because we are still blaming the other person. 
So one thing that I've realized is to first off and foremost, again, feel those feelings, right? Like, why was I so upset to begin with? Was well, because I was, I was really struggling in my business that day. I was believing the thought that everything was failing. I'm never going to be good at this. Okay. So once I recognized that and felt that and realized, okay, that's the thought I'm having. And I didn't even really take the time to like, think of a different thought for work because I was done working for the day. So it's like, okay, that's why I was feeling this way. I know that's not true because I just had a really good morning. Then after you feel the feeling and you kind of pinpoint the thought, then I often like to um, try to have some knowledge or compassion for, okay, the things that my husband is upset about, there is some truth to that. Okay, maybe not all of it, right? Maybe a, some of it is a story and assumptions that he had on me. That's fine. But what can I pick out of that that is truth? Okay, yeah, I was pretty short with him when he came in the door. I was yelling. I didn't ask for help. He did offer help. And I, I gave him one thing to do. He did that thing. Okay, really pinpoint like, okay, what are the truths of the situation? And then I like to reflect and be like, okay, yes, I can see from that point of view, yes, I absolutely yelled. I can see how he was blindsided by it when he came in the door because I was happy and we were laughing when he left. Okay, so so of those things that I can acknowledge, I can take that and I can say, yes, I'm sorry for these things. And here's my apology. And then the kicker is I, I try my best, not always the best at it, but I try my best to not add a but. Well, I'm sorry for yelling, but you yelled at me too, right? Just apologize for the things that you did, how you showed up, the things that you can control. And then the last thing that I've realized is Unfortunately, I say it all the time, I can't control him. I know, it's a bummer. But (laughs) he was not ready to apologize. He was not ready to to say that he was sorry or he he couldn't even see in that moment like how he maybe did something wrong towards me. Like he he couldn't see it, right? He was so puffed out and and on defense mode and attack mode. So to be able to pinpoint that, and I've gotten better about it. Like I've said, I've been able to pick up on it more. I've been able to recognize it more in him as I've been able to recognize it faster in myself. So work on yourself first. Recognize those feelings and those thoughts you're having. Calm down. Pick out the truth from the situation. And then apologize. And then just step back and give them space. Because we can't control them. I can't control the thoughts he's having, but I do know that I apologize and I really meant it. And so that's really all we can do. And like I said, eventually he did come around and, and because I'm able to do that faster and quicker because I've been working on it, these fights are now lasting. It lasted, I don't, I mean, 12 hours, maybe, I mean, because it was just overnight, but, but even then I went to bed I was able to sleep where in the past I would have been running stories in my mind. So worked up, so mad. Nope. I know now I did the best I could, right? Yes, I am stubborn, but I'm able to recognize that stubbornness. I'm able to apologize when I'm not using it for the glory of God, right? I'm not over there yelling at people for worshiping idols. (laughs) I'm, I'm not like Saint Eulalia. So Or yes, she is a saint. Um, so I'm not doing it for that. So yes, okay, I can I can acknowledge, I can apologize, right? And then also, when you can, then talk to God about it and go to confession, right? Because we we want to make sure that we are we have our souls clean as much as possible, always, right? So the first chance you get, then go to confession and just confess it and just say, you know, and know that you're going to be working on it. And I hope that you use those tips to help you get there faster 
like my husband and I have, like, it's, it's really been a game changer for us to get out of that spiral for, and even for me, like just to recognize like how much I kept myself in that negativity and those, those thoughts. And it would just blow up out of proportion to where like almost every time we had a a little disagreement, like almost always one of us would start to mention divorce or start to mention, I don't think you love me anymore. Maybe we should get a divorce. Maybe that's what's best, right? Like, so we would go from that to where we are now to maybe a few hours where we're mad and we know that it's not going to be divorce. It's just, we're having intense feelings right now and we're going to talk it through it. So I hope that helps you guys again, like I coach women one-on-one through this kind of things, these kind of things. Like I would love to talk to you. I get do free discovery calls. So then we kind of chat about whatever struggles you're going through, right? It doesn't have to be marriage. Maybe you're just like, Hey, I have a really bad temper and I want to work on that towards my kids. Maybe it's something that you're really struggling with, with work right now. And you're like my coworkers, I don't know how to keep showing up. Like, I feel like I'm going to get fired or I have to quit because I'm in such a bad situation right now. They're talking about me, right? Like come and chat with me and we'll work through it. And you'll know, yes, I think coaching will help me and I'm ready to sign up. You'll know, Hey, this, I really like this, but maybe I don't have the time for it right now, or maybe it's not for you at all, right? Maybe I'm not the right fit. Maybe you need something completely different, but I just encourage you to go and book your free discovery call and just come and talk with me. That's all it is. We're just talking. So I am praying for you and have a great day. Let's go change our world.